In this lecture, we're going to talk about gestational trophoblastic disease. What that means is molar pregnancies and choriocarcinoma. We're going to talk about them together because molar pregnancies are a significant risk factor for the development of choriocarcinoma. So before we talk about the cancer, let's talk about the weird pregnancies. So let's look at a normal fertilization pattern first because that's going to help us understand what's going on in moles. So normally, an egg with its genetic complement and a sperm come together. Fertilization occurs and they each contribute genetic material equally to form a normal zygote. In a complete mole, what happens is that an egg is supposed to contribute its genetic material in a normal fertilization pattern but there is no egg component. So a normal fertilization occurs, but it's missing that egg component. So in order to fill the full genetic complement, the sperm simply doubles its genetic code, and all of a sudden you have an abnormal fertilization. A complete mole, we're gonna use this for both complete and incomplete, a complete mole is complete. It is completely molar. What that means is there are no fetal parts, it's all mole. It has a complete set of chromosomes. It is completely chromosomal. That is, it has 46 chromosomes. It is also completely spermal. That is, all the genetic material is from the sperm. And it is a result of a normal fertilization but a broken egg. Now, in order to stand the patient presentation, you have to recognize that moles grow faster than fetuses, and therefore they're gonna produce more beta-HCG than would be anticipated. So the way a patient presents is gonna be highly variable, but it's all gonna be based on the fact that moles grow faster and produce more beta-HCG than normal fetus. So the patient can present simply with a size-date discrepancy. The uterus is too big for where the pregnancy is supposed to be, or the beta-HCG is just simply too high. But because beta-HCG also looks like TSH, all that beta-HCG might produce hyperthyroidism. you should also suspect a complete mole in someone who has hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperemesis gravidarum is like morning sickness, but it's morning sickness that's too severe. It causes dehydration, decreased PO intake, or that lasts into the second trimester. It's not just morning sickness, it's super morning sickness, and it's caused by the elevated beta-HCG. Beta-HCG also stimulates the ovaries, and so you might even see an adnexal mass. This is generally a simple cyst. And finally, if you see a grape-like mass in the vagina exiting the cervix, that is almost pathognomonic for a mole. To diagnose it, the first test you're going to get is the ultrasound and the ultrasound shows a snowstorm pattern. You'll probably see a picture of the ultrasound on your test. Can't miss this. The treatment and actual best diagnostic test, this is the quote unquote biopsy, is suction curatage. And notice that suction curatage is not a DNC and will likely be an answer on your, your test. Pick suction curatage. And once you get all of the gestational contents out, you have to follow up with beta-HCG every week while ensuring she does not get pregnant again by putting her on oral contraceptives times one year. Here is why. This is the amount of beta-HCG, this is time. She's gonna start at a very 
highly elevated beta HCG. You get all the gestational contents out and what you should see every week is a decline. Decline to zero and stay at zero. If instead this begins to decline and all of a sudden begins to rise, now you are having suspicion for choriocarcinoma. The problem is, if you let her get pregnant, how can you be sure that the elevation in the beta HCG is from the pregnancy versus the choreo? And the answer is you can't, which is why any person who has a complete or incomplete mole needs to be kept from getting pregnant with OCPs for one year to ensure she's out of the risk for development of choriocarcinoma. Now, we're going to talk about incomplete moles next. And if you understand the complete mole, incomplete mole is very easy. If you don't, pause it, go back, watch complete mole again because the presentation, diagnosis, and treatment are all the same. In an incomplete mole, an egg is fertilized by two sperm. It's caused by dispermy. And therefore, inherently, cannot have the normal amount of genetic complement. And an incomplete mole is incomplete. It is incompletely molar. That is, there are fetal parts. It is incompletely chromosomal. There's not a complement of 46. It's generally a complement of 69. It is a product of an egg being fertilized by two sperm, that it is a normal egg. The patient presentation is the same as for a complete mole. The diagnosis is the same as for a complete mole. And the treatment is the same for the complete mole, including the follow-up keeping her from getting pregnant with OCPs and following the beta HCG. And this is why any pregnancy, but especially molar pregnancies, are a risk factor for causing choriocarcinoma. And we're going to finish with the cancer, choreo. The path of this cancer is that it is a cancer of gestational contents, which means that any pregnancy, status opposed to molar pregnancy, a miscarriage, and even a normal pregnancy, you can develop this cancer. If one develops after normal pregnancy, it is increased in its severity because this normally does not happen. The patient is going to present with an elevated beta HCG despite having passed all of her gestational contents. And because of the elevated beta HCG, it may present very similarly to complete and in, in incomplete moles. To diagnose it, the first thing you're going to do is get the ultrasound. You're going to do the suction curatage, not the DNC. And once you have the biopsy, the tissue that shows you choriocarcinoma, you're going to stage with a CT scan. Treatment is going to be done by first debulking. And that can be done with the curatage, but often OBs will recommend a total abdominal hysterectomy. This is not necessary. And you're going to treat with some component of MAC methotrexate, actinomycin, and cyclophosphamide. Everybody gets methotrexate and actinomycin D. Certain people get cyclophosphamide, and that is when the disease is metastatic and has a poor prognosis. That is in the case of an OR statement, 
someone who has liver or brain mets, someone who has a choriocarcinoma after a normal pregnancy, or in someone who the beta HCG was greater than 40,000. And so gestational trophoblastic disease is about choriocarcinoma. Knowing that moles increase the risk significantly for choriocarcinoma is crucial, especially that after you get the gestational contents out, the patient has to remain on OCPs to keep from being pregnant so that you know that the rise in beta-HCG is a product of choriocarcinoma and not normal pregnancy. That is moles in choreo. We make these videos for free, and we need your help. Please donate, because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate.